Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Hector Navarro, helping to fill in while Eric Voss is out on paternity leave. Yay, Eric! So you get a video written and hosted by me. Marvel Studios, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and official timeline written by Anthony Bresnikan, Amy Ratcliffe, and Rebecca Theodore Vachon was recently released and has given us MCU fans its clearest and cleanest look at the sacred timeline so far, providing tons of clarity, fixing some errors in continuity, and gifting us with even more temporal implications or templications than ever before, so we're here to break it all down for you. But because the MCU timeline spans from the literal dawn of the universe to the year 2026 and beyond, we're just going to focus on all the projects coming from Marvel Studios that are set post-Avengers Endgame, meaning phases four and five, to help us better understand exactly what's been going down in the MCU as of late. An official timeline is an absolutely gorgeous book and has a real Marvel no prize energy in the way it uses the TVA and Miss Minutes as the device to bring us, the reader, through the events of time, including the fact that mistakes and errors can happen. After all, the sacred timeline has to generate a lot of paperwork for the TVA, and we all know how convoluted paperwork can get. <laughs> TPS reports. So let's begin. We know that Avengers Endgame starts in 2018 and jumps to five years later to wrap up its events in fall of 2023, where Loki also branched off after he stole the Tesseract during the time heist to 2012. That Loki got captured by the TVA and taken to the organization's headquarters, which exists outside of time and space and leads to the events of the Loki series. So we'll pick up with that later. The MCU in timeline order on Disney Plus has Loki placed after Endgame and What If placed after that, which makes sense considering the multiverse creating events of season one of Loki. And we also knew that WandaVision took place three weeks after the ending of Avengers Endgame. And we get our first templication here when an official timeline points out that during a briefing, Jimmy Woo says the Maximoffs were born in 1989, but the file on screen says their birth happened in 1988. Miss Minute says it could be because records were destroyed during Sokovia's various conflicts. So there you go. Marvel no prize energy. Then moving into spring of 20. 2024, the events of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings takes place. Also in spring of 2024, the beginning of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier occurs, specifically the first five and a half episodes of the miniseries, up to the point where the Dora Milaje arrive and escort Baron Helmut Zemo back to the raft and Bucky asks the Dora for a favor, which end up being vibranium wings for Sam Wilson, who himself is training with the Captain America shield before Bucky delivers an apology for not knowing what it would mean to hand the shield to Sam. Next, as we learn from the opening opening of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, set in spring of 2025, King T'Challa dies a year earlier in spring of 2024, and his funeral is held in Wakanda. After that, in summer of 2024, the events of Spider-Man Far From Home begin and end. Here, our second templication occurs when Miss Minutes acknowledges that Mysterio, con man Quentin Beck, knew that the sacred timeline used the designation Earth 616, but Miss Minutes suggests it could be because Beck or his team looked at some of Eric Selvig's theories from more than a decade earlier, where we saw in Thor The Dark World that he had scribbled the phrase 616 universe on a chalkboard before being released from treatment, which Miss Minutes chalks up to Selvig being ahead of the curve. Okay, <laughs> weird. If you care about the Sony Spider-Man movies that don't feature Spider-Man, the film Venom Let There Be Carnage would fit perfectly in here in a viewing order as the mid credit scene brings Venom Eddie Brock into the sacred timeline so he can lick a TV screen. But right after that TV licking, we rejoin the Falcon and the Winter Soldier miniseries for its last episode, also taking place in summer of 2024. With this story seeing Sam Wilson accept the mantle of Captain America with a fresh set of vibranium wings and take down terrorists in New York City. We get some new templications. The first one is that Wakandan scientists and technicians, and possibly Shuri herself, built these wings for Cap during or right after their King T'Challa's death, which is very bittersweet and implies that Wakanda was ready to help usher in a new hero after losing their own. The second implication is that either Sam Wilson's fight with the Flag Smashers was happening while Peter Parker was still in Europe, a little overlap that could explain why Spidey didn't arrive to help Cap in NYC, or even if the fight at the Global Repatriation Council is happening after Peter gets back from his vacation and his identity is revealed to the world, it would also help explain why Spidey was maybe not in the 
the best place to help Captain America. Peter had to figure out how to hire a lawyer after all. And that brings us to the start of Spider-Man No Way Home, beginning in fall 2024, where Peter and Aunt May hire a really good lawyer, Matt Murdock, and Peter begins his last year of high school. But before we can finish up the events of that movie, we have to move on to another. Eternals, also taking place during fall of 2024. The remaining gathered Eternals are able to prevent the emergence from destroying the planet, leaving a massive petrified celestial sticking out of the Indian Ocean. Our next implication is that since Eternals takes place in fall of 2024, that means only three full MCU projects take place before the Celestial is referenced again in She-Hulk Attorney at Law. But that also means 15 MCU projects have been released since that haven't revisited the topic. Rumors are Captain America Brave New World will tackle the Celestial, but we'll see in February 2025. Back in the sacred timeline, in October 2024, Arishim arrives in the outer atmosphere of Earth to declare that he will spare humanity and return for judgment. And after Eros and Pip arrive on the Domo in space and Dane Whitman gets visited by Blade on Earth, we return to the continuing adventures of Peter Parker. One shot energy, huh? Okay, I'll try it. Whoa! What does One Shot's Focus Chew do? Whoa, one shot really is all you need. Begin your transformation with one shot energy today by going to oneshotenergy.com slash new rock stars for 10% off your order. Taking place in the very packed fall of 2024, the rest of the events of Spider-Man No Way Home occur, ending with Doctor Strange's spell erasing the entire planet's memory of Peter Parker's existence. Again, if you care about Sony Spider-Man movies that don't feature Spider-Man, their meme hit Morbius would go here, as their mid credit scene features Michael Keaton's Adrian Toomes being somehow sent to the Morbius universe to clumsily ask for a team up with the vampire superhero. After Spider-Man No Way Home, but still taking place in fall of 2024 is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. An official timeline summarizes the film's finale by saying that, quote, as the kindly 838 Wanda gathers the boys and assures the heartbroken Scarlet Witch they will be loved, the Wanda Maximoff of Universe 616 surrenders. She destroys Wanda Gore and collapses it upon herself, ending two great threats to all the multiverse. That's certainly not a definitive death for Scarlet Witch, just a quote, ending of a threat. So our next templication is that it's entirely possible for Wanda Maximoff of Universe 616 to return. Next, in December of 2024, we see Peter Parker visit MJ in a coffee shop where he decides not to tell her who he is, sparing her potential pain. And then in a newly sewn and perfect Spider-Man suit, Peter swings by the giant Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center where Hawkeye will soon fight Kingpin's minions. So Hawkeye is next, just the first three and a half episodes, beginning with Kate Bishop's prank on her college campus where she accidentally destroys Stain Tower, named after Obadiah Stain before his death, and ending with Kate's mom meeting Clint Barton and then making a call to a mysterious person, who ends up being Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, who then recruits Yelena Belova, sister of the deceased Natasha Romanoff, for a mission. Yelena is at her sister's memorial in the post credit scene of Black Widow, where she says, You're not supposed to be bothering me on my holiday time, Valentina. Which is our next templication, because because that lines up with the holiday setting of Hawkeye. Then the last three episodes of Hawkeye take place, ending on December 25th, Christmas Day, when Kate Bishop joins Clint Barton for a family holiday. Moving into the year 2025, the first three episodes of She-Hulk Attorney at Law occur in the spring. From Jennifer Walters' opening court case that gets crashed by social media influencer Titania, to her fighting off the Asgardian-empowered wrecking crew outside of her apartment. Then also in spring of 2025 are the events of Moon Knight, every episode. Our next templication is that an official timeline points out that Mark Spector had a passport issued in December 2018, meaning he was active after the blip and during the five years everyone was gone. The beginning of Thor Love and Thunder is next, in spring of 2025, where Jane Foster is battling cancer before journeying to New Asgard to see Mjolnir reform in front of her to make her the mighty Thor. And then still in spring of 2025, the events of Black Panther Wakanda Forever play out. Queen Ramonda faces members of the United Nations all the way until 
until the new Black Panther, Shuri, mourns her brother on a beach in Haiti. Beginning in spring and moving into the summer and fall of 2025, the rest of She-Hulk Attorney at Law takes place, episodes four through nine, with our next Templication happening, which is Jennifer Walters herself crosses out and rewrites the entries for her last episode in the official timeline book, seizing control of her own narrative. Look at that. Excellent touch. Also in the fall of 2025, we see the events of Ms. Marvel occur, which include Kamala Khan traveling back to summer 1947 on the sacred timeline to help her own grandmother find her family during the British mandated partition of India. On an unverified date, a father named Gore's daughter dies, and then he finds an oasis where he uses the Necrosword to begin killing the gods who didn't answer his prayers. In fall of 2025, the God of Thunder reunites with the new mighty Thor, and they team up to take down Gore the God Butcher during the events of Thor Love and Thunder. We get a few new templications here, the first being that because Thor and Jane broke up, quote, eight years, seven months, and six days before, that means they broke up sometime in early 2017. And that implies that Thor really dove into his work afterwards and left for the stars investigating Infinity Stone things. The second is that it's still unclear how teenager Groot can look exactly the same in Love and Thunder as he did two years prior when he came back from the blip in fall of 2023, but just a few months from now, look like a very swole Groot during their holiday festivities. But look, I I don't know how Flora Colossus grows. That's none of my business. Maybe Groot was inspired by Thor's transformation and really hit the gym afterwards. The Werewolf by Night special occurs, or seems to occur, next during the fall of 2025. Although Miss Minutes hits us with our next templication, with a TVA alert that states, magical influences can make stuff like this hard to pin down. I sound like Holly Hunter. That's Mrs. Incredible for you young people. And rounding out phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special taking place in December of 2025. Mantis tells Star-Lord she's his sister, and Kevin Bacon is kidnapped and returned home. We don't know exactly where the projects in Phase 5 take place, but we can pretty much place them on the timeline by moving into the year 2026, having the first two episodes of Loki Season 2 take place before Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which takes place in July of 2026, thanks to a sign for Scott Lang's book signing being on July 24th, and the movie being placed after the Guardians holiday special on the MCU in timeline order on Disney+. Plus. Even though Loki is outside of time, the post credit scene of Quantumania featured a tease for Loki Season 2, Episode 3. So after Loki Season 2 is wrapped up, we move on to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, then Secret Invasion, then the mid credit scene of the last episode of Ms. Marvel, which featured a sneak peek at the next and most recent project on the timeline, The Marvels. And that's not even all of the newly resurfaced templications we get from an official timeline. If you want to see us talk about even more, check out the Breakroom channel where we covered the rest in some fun conversations and answer your burning questions about the MCU. And there you have it, folks. Phases four and five so far of the MCU in the correct so far timeline order. Follow our three new Rockstars channels. Follow me at Hector is Funny and at Heroes Reforged on YouTube and have a great and safe holiday. We'll see you. Bye.